Welcome everyone to Mystery, a podcast about myths and history. I'm one of your hosts, uh, creator Bryant, with another host and creator, Cammie. Hey, Cammie. Hey, Bryant. How are you? I am excellent. Uh, it has been a really good uh, break into fall. We're getting our cinnamon brooms out and scraping them around, and we are into the spoopy season, So, uh, which has always been really fun. You know, the star show, to, the show started right before things got spooky, and then we had a really fun, like, Halloween episode with mummies and stuff like that, and every year we try and bring a theme. What would you say the theme is? I don't want to get the verbiage wrong. I would wrong. say, like, occultist, the occult in general. Okay, cool. Yeah, so we're talking about... Uh, uh, old white dudes in the occult. That's the right now. <laughs> that's kind of it. Yeah. I mean, um, the, I don't. Hopefully, they won't all be, but the yes. first two are. Yes. Right. Yeah. So we're talking about there is this incredible figure who I, I think I had heard about like in proxy, but I did not directly put my name on uh, or my finger on his name. John D. Uh, John D. Uh, who was a um, uh, Elizabethan, that's Elizabethan era, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was a, a mathematician, astronomer, astrologer, occultist, and alchemist. I, that's kind of the, the vibe we're getting. So, like, th just picture Gandalf is the best thing I can say to do um, when it comes to this guy. So, as always on the show, Cammie is going to give a story about John Dee in her own words, and then I will lead a discussion. I'm very excited about this discussion, too, because we're going to talk about Hermes. I'm going to find a way to bring him up. Wow. Which, if you love the show, you know us, you know that that <laughs> was a really fun topic. So, Cammie, please uh, take us away. Sure. Late in the evening, approaching the 11th hour, two lanterns appeared in the darkness of Walton Leedale's green. The two figures approached from opposite ways and met in a lush bit of dewy grass. They did not greet each other, but with a nod, and they both went to work sewing a circle of salt around them and drawing symbols in the dirt, removing great tufts of land in their haste. As they worked, the ground began to shake and smoke, stirred from below, the mist surrounding them, until the dirt began to part and terrible clawing sounds could be heard from beneath where they stood. And suddenly, in a flash of blinding light, there stood a creature with horns and cloven hooves, standing on his hind legs like a satyr. The beast spoke and called himself Corazon. He told the pair of his magic and how he could inhabit the dead and control them to do his bidding, but they must break the salt circle to see his true power. Kelly took his foot and traced a line down, breaking the salt. Dee looked in horror at Kelly's face, twisted as though he wasn't in control of it. The demon said they must hurry. It was almost time. So they followed him to a graveyard not 30 yards away. The demon, though, could not be... The demon, though not being from this plane, seemed to know all direction and what lied there. He gave Dee a spell for waking the dead because he himself could not cross the holy land. So Dee and Kelly brought forth a skeleton, and the demon commanded it and brought it to him. Then he took hold of the spirit, and the bones formed a ghostly figure who spoke and walked just like a man. When they were done, the two men parted as silently as they had begun. The evil they awaken left to roam the earth ungoverned. And that man, David <laughs> S. Pumpkins. Yes, it was. His first appearance. <laughs> I do want to say um, my, so my sources. Um, yeah. I had a really good article. Um, it was martintop.org.uk. Um, and it's Salem Congressional Chapel. And it was Dr. D. Raising the Dead at uh, Walton Lee Dale. And then I also used um, a Wikipedia article on the demon himself and on John D. Coron's on. Yeah, I hadn't heard about that before this. I I, I had seen about it, Kelly and, and D interacting, but I didn't know that they specifically called out this dude. What a fun name, Coron's on. It sounds too modern to me. It, it's, it's, this is really interesting. So, you know, we're in the 17th century and it, it, so it's a, it's a, I don't know it, for me it's a it's a interesting time period because you might think of something like being a, you know ancient if we're mm -hmm. talking about this kind of thing um, this feels like not too recent either like um, you know I, I I have an image of, of the um, Guy Ritchie Sherlock Holmes film uh, where you know near the the climax Holmes is like redraw uh, retracing the steps of 
Lord Blackwood because you know you, we the audience are believing that maybe this is magic that's happening and stuff like that. So sure, um, Holmes, uh, you know, uh, Robert Downey Jr. playing Holmes does the like pagan ritual that he's doing, and so they, you know, and that's 19th century and stuff. So it's like yeah, but then this this was like you know a few hundred years ago. But they're it's really cool, and and I'm I'm excited. I was excited to look into John D because. He, he, he was in, extremely influential. Um, he was in a direct advisor to Queen Elizabeth. Um, and he uh, really importantly, um, it seems as a political advisor, he advocated the idea of finding uh, English colonies in the New World. Um, and he's uh, credited with coining the term British Empire, even, as some sources um, recall. He had uh, one of the largest libraries in England at the time. And I mean, he was just, he was extremely smart. Um, he was uh, a polymath. And so like exactly the kind of thing I don't want to get into. Um, right. But, what does that even mean? <laughs> right. But that's where his like foundation of knowledge was. And I, I can't remember. What is it? That, what, the ancient Greek school that's like um, all of you who are ignorant of geometry, like don't enter. I'm just like, damn it. I'm out. Like, I can't do it. I don't know geometry. I'm sorry. And I get it. I get why it's important to know math to understand logic and philosophy and stuff like that. But I'm just, I'm sorry, but that's, that's not my game. Uh, I, I, I was hooked on phonics. That was it. I can, I can spell words really well. That's or pronounce them. But, uh, for John D. So he, he was into everything you can think of as far as like occult alchemy astrology goes for, um, and hermetic philosophy, which was, uh, kind of arising around at the time. This is, if you did see the episode, we talked about um, the ancient Greek god Hermes, which had a second coming, a return tour, sort of uh, during the Christian period, um, but even goes deeper than that. Um, Hermes, Tris, Tris Majestus, which was sort of this idea of like Hermes uh, apparently wrote these, uh, is accredited with writing these texts that are called the Hermetic, like texts uh, which describe Hermetic philosophy. Um, it's very relate. It's it has a lot of relation to like early um, rising Christian philosophy and the Neoplatonism, which Neoplatonism was this idea that arose um, during like 300 CE, I believe. Um, so right before like Rome really Christianized, uh, it was this idea of um, uh, of like it was kind of like a monotheistic paganism in a way. I guess it's like a kind of a simple oversimplification, but uh, it was it was something that was fairly popular, and so. D looked into all of these things. Now, it seems like D did advocate that he was a Christian. Um, he believed that he could actually, through his occultism and through his study of hermetic philosophy, Neoplatonism, and Christianity, he believed he could confer with angels or uh, Chronazon. Cor or Coronzon. <laughs> one, one of the others. So um, he, some of the uh, primary sources we have, which we have many thanks to his, his large diary. We have his private diary. We have a, a diary, um, so I guess a more public diary. But we also have what he calls, uh, or what his, uh, uh, his spiritual conferences with angels. There we go. Rec recorded in his diaries and other manuscripts. So he would, he would have these sort of things. He would confer with what he believed was angels and go from there. And he, so, you know, it, it was interesting because, uh, Queen Elizabeth conferred to him about like when we should do X, Y, Z. And he would say, I'll look at the sky. I'll look at the stars, just sort of like how an ancient Ro I would expect that of like a Roman, you know, um, general or, or something like that to go, Hey, when should I, you know, attack the Persians? And I'm like, well, this goat's, uh, left intestine or lower intestine <laughs> is falling over here. And there's a bird that's screaming with a, you know, a mouse in its, uh, mouth. So we should go now. That sounded very much like that, but, a, but, a, 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 I'll put in quotes, Christian sort of idea, uh, a modern of the, the 16th or 17th century, early 1600s. So it was really kind of it's interesting that she believed that. And you, you told me a story. I couldn't find – I didn't look for it harshly, but you told me a story sure. uh, involving um, the weather, right? The Spanish Armada, yeah. He um, took – basically, he was a meteorologist, I right. was, for lack of a better word. Um, and I don't know if he was able to, like, divine, like – not divine, but you know, um, barometric pressure Guess or something. Me. I don't, yeah, sure. I don't know like what he was using. Um, some but, observation, yeah, right. Some, some, luck. yeah, some scientific observation, yeah, to this is what they think anyway to right. divine the weather. I mean, that's basically what it, sure, what he's doing. And he, <laughs> um, <laughs> I just imagine, I just imagine he's like, he's in England and he's like, my queen, 
it's going to rain. And she's like, oh. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Just but he's got like the weather map behind him pointing right. to. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. So we got a, the Spanish Armada is coming in <laughs> from the West and we've got a heavy uh, truckload of rain always <laughs> permeating over the British islands. So exactly, I don't believe we yeah. should, uh, we should sail. My queen. Yeah. So he told the queen not to sail her ships mm -hmm. and, um, he basically like build it as he was putting a curse or a hex on the Spanish armada. Sure. Um, the, the Spanish ships got decimated. I mean, there's maybe like not even a quarter of them left with this yeah. huge storm. I don't know if it's a hurricane or what it was. I don't even know if they have hurricanes. I'm not sure. It was um, invented yet. Just like, yeah, they didn't invent them yet, but yeah. <laughs> some kind of thing uh, that caused the ships to, you know, fail in the weather. And, um, so then the British were able to go out after that and, and sort of take charge of this battle. But that was That's like cool. a huge win for England and, and kind sure. of esta started establishing their empire more. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, that, the, the yeah, I mean, just that the, one thing. They were the rulers of the sea. And this is when England started to like take over that that section. So Right. And if you think, I mean, can you imagine being like. Uh, the Spanish used in chart, like wh whoever the king was back then, and, and just being like, "Oh my God, they've got like the sorcerer on their side. Like, there's no way we can." Yeah, well, and apparently D traveled like a lot too. So he he kind of went all over Europe. Um, he so Edward Kelly, um, also known as Edward Talbot, uh, you mentioned him uh, as one of the guys who uh, summoned um, Coronzon with him. Um, he was a young guy. He he only lived he was born in 50, 1555 died in 97 98 um and he was also an occultist and scryer um he and d eventually kind of fell out um but uh they began working together in 83 and they uh through seances claimed that they could communicate with the angel enoch which gave way to enochian uh magic and language mm -hmm. which is still studied today um by people uh so um did they, they start that language i wasn't clear on that it, or it seems like it so it says enox gave them the enochian language and okay. script which Dean yeah because i that's what i read too but i was like the, i thought that this was like older i thought it was like biblical for some reason yeah. i don't know it, but it, they so they they met um I, I i thought i had written it down i'm pretty sure they met in vienna or prague i think is what it was even so they, oh yeah um, you're gonna meet all your occultists in prague 100 percent. <laughs> go there that's now, what it's yeah. there for so uh anyway so so and and um even uh, uh john d um he traveled to uh russia to meet with i think it was star nicholas i'm sure i could just say nick i'm sure there's there's a few of them so he he went to go meet this Tsar and uh convince him uh to uh, yeah voyage in, in 81 Tsar ivan the fourth there we go sorry not okay. nicholas uh to persuade ivan to help with uh, establishing a british empire in the arctic um, so it didn't, it didn't work out, um, for, why would you want why? that? I mean, it doesn't make I sense. Know. I don't know. They saw a funny. penguin and they were like, we got to do this. Is there penguins even in the Arctic? I don't know. <laughs> Comment Might below. Be yeah. So, uh, that's a different podcast, right. but yeah. Um, Kelly though, uh, was accused. He got, um, accused of being a, a charlatan and a fraud is what my notes say. Um, and and so he he actually died in prison. Um, he was arrested. Uh, so D had a similar fate, unfortunately. Um, he he lived. Uh, so fifteen twenty seven to sixteen oh eight is when he died. Um, and he he was quite busy. Um, always sort of like in. I mean, he he was he was a true scholar, and so he he, I mean, he really dedicated himself to this. But it it seems like his dances with the seances went a little too far and his political enemies were able to pretty easily get him imprisoned um, after saying, hey, you've conferred with the devil. And he's like, that wasn't the devil. That was Koran's on. <laughs> totally different things. <laughs> yeah, that's that's like in between angels right. and devils. <laughs> yeah, come on. And they were like, Koran, that sounds like you made that up. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he it, it, my notes say he was eventually disgraced and died in poverty, unfortunately. So well, um, to the who who took over? Was it James? The after Elizabeth? Mm hmm. Probably. That sounds right. It, whoever it was, was um, into like the witch trials, like started the witch sure. trials sure, sure, in sure. England. So that's part of it. Like he was a witch, basically. It was James the first. You're right. Yeah. So, oh, no, that, that's great. Yeah. I, I guess you would want to see like, yeah, to cleanse the weird. I mean, 
That dude knows way too much math right. for my comfort. And the That's other guy was cool. like built sort of built as like a drunk is is sort of everything I've read about the Edward Kelly guy. Um he just ended up being like kind of a fraudster. He he def yeah, he was younger. It seems like he his rise is a little more meteoric. It seems like he did not know math. I'm like he he's right. that's not what he's accredited for knowing. At least like right. <laughs> for D D really seemed like I he, he seemed like he could have been slightly crazy, but he he really seemed like he was in tune with the, you know, the, the, I mean, being a smart person at the time and not having like enlightenism and rationalism to like kind of <laughs> bring that to a point where it doesn't make you seem like you're as insane. So, well, if you're the only person that can predict the weather, then you might as well attribute it to magic. Yeah, very true. Yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> um, so, I mean, he, he had one of the largest libraries. I mean, this this dude was he was a learned dude, and it just it went south, unfortunately, uh, in a lot of ways. It looks like, um, but it's 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 really cool because of his education, because of his importance. There are tons of I mentioned his private diaries. Um, we have his letters to Queen Elizabeth, his letters to Edward Kelly, um, Dee's preface to his English translation of Euclid's Elements. Um, general and rare memorials pertaining to the state of man, uh, letter to star Ivan the fourth. So we have tons of really cool direct references. And I think that's why we do kind of know as much about him. Um, there's a lot of writings on him too. Um, John D and the empire of the angels by Deborah Harkness. Um, the John D's natural philosophy between science and religion was done by Nicholas Cluley in the, uh, the late eighties. Um, it's really fun to see. I mean, there was stuff in the 70s, the John D. The World of an Elizabethan Magus by Peter J. French in 1972. So, you know, even in the 70s and 80s, I mean, even before that, this guy was clearly like an interesting figure, very important. And and, and just rat, like if you if you took out all the occult stuff, he'd be just as interesting. You add in all the occult stuff. If you took out all the other stuff, I mean, he'd, he'd be John Kelly, basically. But or uh, whatever <laughs> his name Kelly, was, Kelly, yeah. yeah. But, uh, but he's just this kind of amalgamation of both. So I, th I think it's wild um, that it, it was there. It really reminds me of like early Greek philosophers who, you know, they used paganism. It was like intertwined with the education, you know, and it didn't like change it as much, but it, you know, for him it did obviously in a lot of ways, but yeah, I, really fun to see, really, really interesting guy to learn about. And I think one of the best ways to start off talking about these, these figures that we've picked to talk about, so. I'm, I've been really pleased. Cami, that was yes. a great subject that you picked. Uh, Thank you. If you know about John D or anything <laughs> like that, I, I'm because I, like I said, it's like my brain reading, learning and reading more about him. I did not know his name exactly like I did this, but I felt like I had heard or learned about him before. And I'm curious if you've heard about him, listener, watcher. And if, if so, please let us know where. And yeah, I do was have. That, was he in a movie? Was he in something? I yeah, know. well, I do have one thing. Um, the so I don't know if anyone's familiar with Bedknobs and Broomsticks. The oh. it was a movie from I believe the seventies, the nineteen seventies. Um, <laughs> I mean, when, when I saw it would be, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, for, so a movie from the nineteen seventies, and um, we have uh, sort of two people. One is kind of a fraudster. The other one mm. is a genuine witch. And they sort of meet together. It almost is like John D and, and Edward Kelly, it, you know, sure. sort of. But they find this um, this book and it's, you know, I think it's like Azeroth or something. It's like some kind of angel that they're trying to confer with. Yeah. And the book doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's like some sort of Latin words that aren't exactly Latin. And then it's yeah. like a Greek word that I don't know if it's real or not. And they, sure. they come together but um, I'll just read it to you. But there's a song that they have, and they and then these words are um, part of what they uh, the great star of As of Astaroth is what they okay. found the name of the book that they found. Um, but yeah, so it's Traguna McCoides Tracorum Satis D, and that's D E E, and it's spelled so it's spelled uh -huh. like John D. Um, and in the movie, if you're familiar, they raise uh -huh. the dead. They raised a great uh, army to fight um, Hitler. Oh, yeah, how pleasant! What yeah. a good noble cause. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really cool. That's fine. Yeah, I, that's. I, I feel like D is so subtle, and I. I mean, academically, it seems like he's been thoroughly looked at, but I just felt like I feel like I'm. I'm just surprised that he's not. I don't know. I just feel like something else should have mentioned him. Maybe people are too scared. 
Yeah, he's got a lot of power controlling the weather. What the hell kind of surname is D? You know? Yeah, that... That alone freaks me out. It's not like... I don't know. I'm thinking of all the Anglo, you know, Saxon names I can think of. That's not one of them. <laughs> Cause, and, and I would I would imagine he would have done what some others did at the time and called himself, like, Periphicles or something like that, you know? Sure, yeah. Um, but now he's just like, I'm John. Yo, what's your, what's your family name? D. He's just, <laughs> oh, okay. Nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, this was a really great topic. Um, this is like a to- kind of somewhat of a non sequitur, but I wanted to bring it up. Um, and uh, so, you know, I've I've been practicing uh, for doing voiceover work, and I've been I've been trying to find works in the public domain to to utilize. And <clears throat> and I, I'll I'll ask like AI and stuff like that. Like, what are some like good works in the public domain that I can read, and that you know give me different inflections and stuff like that. And, and it does recommend it uh, Poe a lot. Um, and I, I, I was like, yeah, I, I definitely could do some Poe, but I, I don't know if I want to go to that just yet. Um, you know, it's a little tricky. But I found one story that Poe did. I don't know if you've heard of this, Cammy. It's called The Angel of the Odd. Are you familiar with this? No, I'm not. So it's, I was not familiar with it either. I don't think many people are. And But it's really funny. It's it's kind of like a – it's one of his more humorous and satirical mm-hmm. short works. And it is about a, a a dude who is like chilling at home, gets drunk, and he's reading a newspaper, and he reads this like ridiculous story about how this uh, guy dies after accidentally um, sucking down a needle down his throat during like this just crazy happenstance. That's terrible. And this guy is like, he what's that? I said that sounds terrible. <laughs> I know, and that's and well, he thinks it's just BS. It's just like you know sensationalism and. Uh, so he's, he, he's just saying out loud how it's stupid and he thinks about all these other stories, like these popular stories. And he just thinks that so many people write and these untrue things for just ridiculous reasons and people can be just so gullible and they are stupid. And he just kind of like hates it and he vows to never fall for these horrible things. Just as he's kind of doing that though, this, this thing makes a noise and it's this, it's a, a claimed angel made up of various like alcoholic containers, like kegs and wine bottles. Sure. And it starts talking to him, and it has a very, very thick German accent. And you know this because Poe wrote it, and the guy, the the the, the angel is he's he's talking like this, like <laughs> z- there's these everywhere. Sure. <laughs> and it's hilarious, and he's and he's like the angel's convincing him, like, oh, I I caused that, I caused those things. It's it's just a part of. So you it's know, like a some, chaos, yeah. Yeah, some things just happen that way. And the guy's like, you're crazy. No way. I'm going to bed. And the guy, then he wakes up and his life, it, it gets, starts going crazy. Everything else starts happening inexplicably. And he ends up uh, kind of horrifically, um, he's like stuck on a balloon. Um, so yeah, stranded in a balloon. At the, um, and, and he's just kind of at the mercy of the angel. Like, And he and he, he realizes, oh my gosh, it's the angel's doing because I, I was so skeptic. And, you know, I was being rational and stuff like that. And I, I thought it was really cool. And some analysis on it is it's like kind of talking about the creative process. Um, it's sort of talking about uh, how, you know, it, it's good to, it's, it, you know, gullibility, human gullibility and it, it is kind of dangerous uh, at times, but also being like too skeptical, not believing, you know, there's, there's a fine line you have. Oh, to sure. Correct. Yeah. Like not allowing yourself right. to believe anything. Yeah. Yeah. That you just immediately. Well, you'll something. miss stuff if you don't consider things. Exactly. Could be a possibility. Right. And so um, it, it was cool. I mean, this was published in 1844. And so I could totally see that being an important subject and also kind of being like an annoying thing too, of like mm-hmm. rationality, like things getting, you know, erased due to rationality uh, you know in, in the the mainstream and stuff like that so really funny the angel of the odd it's very it's short work and it's uh, you can just google it and download it right now because it's you know edgar Allan poe's work so it's it's in the free uh market but yes so uh I, i'm gonna publish uh, me reading that soon on youtube i can That's link cool. to our yeah our thing here it's been really fun <laughs> Um, I can't wait to read that, but something that I'd like you to check out and maybe any listener that's interested, my favorite poem is called the bright waterfall of angels and it's by Susan fire. And it kind of talks about like angels sort of being part of everything. So there's an angel for this. There's an angel for that. And like, just the idea of there being an angel for the odd, like odd circumstances. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's a really that's a great way to bring it around. Yeah, exactly, and that, that's cool. I, that's I think kind of how Poe was like imagining it. So, um, you know, Angel could kind of been Muse here, but sure, more, yeah, yeah, industrial era version. <laughs> so, 
I love it. Well, everyone, uh, thanks for joining us as always. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Mystery. I forgot to mention at the beginning, if you are expecting Irish comedians, but stick, stuck around this <laughs> long especially, thanks so much. Please let us know what you think of the show and how we can improve. Mystery, all one word, I-E at the end, right? Thumbs up? Yeah, Got just it. an I-E though, no S. Correct. <laughs> let us know if you have any topics you'd like us to discuss. And thanks again, everyone. We will see you next time. Oh! oh.